With one of their two first round draft picks, could the Ravens actually take one of the top cornerbacks available? Could you envision any scenario where the Ravens actually trade up to draft the Jalen Waddle or Devontae Smith? Why do Ravens need to get offensive linemen that are true to their position? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. He's a fan. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Saint Raven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers. Uh, this is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team. And we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of NFL questions from subscribers, then you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com. And for the patrons, you can send your question to me in a DM directly on Patreon. Team Keep It Clean, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Uh, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons, by the way. Um, appreciate y'all big time. We got some really, really good questions before the draft to get into. Without any further ado, let's not waste anybody's time and get right into it. So the first question came from my boy, Josh P. And before we get into this, uh, Team Keep It Clean, make sure you don't let anybody kill your vibe, man. Don't let anybody kill your vibe. If there's a certain way that you like doing things and that certain way works for you, do it. Keep doing it. Keep rocking with it. That certain way works for you. It may not work for other people, but it works for you. So keep on doing your thing and don't let anybody try to kill what it is that you're doing. I love y'all. Now back to my guy Josh question. I didn't mean to interrupt like that, but I had to get that out. Anyway. He said, pick number 31. Hey, man, I hope all is well. I'm not a huge fan of sending Orlando Brown to the Kansas City Chiefs. I kept thinking, why did we do this? I knew we didn't have much leverage with everyone knowing Orlando Brown wasn't going to play for us next season. Then it hit me. Pick number 31. If the Bucks stay put and don't trade up and someone falls in love with a QB and wants that fifth-year option, let's say Davis Mills from Stanford, and is worried that the Bucks could take him to sit behind Brady for a year or two, we could have just gotten a lottery ticket. Gaining some quality picks, giving us flexibility to move freely up or down the board, uh, targeting some impact scheme fit players. That's my favorite part about everything he just said. Some impact scheme players uh, and being aggressive. Nacosta loves the draft, and this would be a game he'd love to play. What are your thoughts? I could be wrong, and we could just trade up and get Devontae Smith from Bam. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I love it all, man. I love everything you just said. And that's something that I never, ever, ever thought about at all. Because that is such a smart thought, such a just a great point that you made about, yeah, the Bucks, they could be thinking about getting a QB of the future. And if a team really thinks like, whoa, Bucks may try to get this guy in the fifth year option. That's what the Ravens did with Lamar. They jumped up and got him with that fifth year option. So they could be in the situation that they're literally in right now. So this, it, that makes sense. It makes so much sense, everything that you said. Thank you for that. Next question came from my guy Rico. He said, with two first round picks, do you think that the Ravens should draft one of the top cornerbacks if available with one of them? Marlowe is locked up, but MP has one or two years left and Jimmy is almost out the door. A top cornerback would give us insurance just in case of an injury or two happen. Uh, us as Ravens fans know what a depleted secondary can look like, LOL. Thoughts? Keep up the good work and blessings to the family and shout out the team. Keep it clean. Appreciate it. Wow, y'all are like... This episode, y'all are like bringing it from jump and, and really having, bringing out some points that are really making me think and, and, and reconsider some options. And yeah, if, if they got a cornerback, it would not be the pick that a lot of people would want. Um, and I even still, I, I don't think they would take one super early. Maybe, um, well, I would say second round, but they don't have a second round pick as of right now. Um, but cornerback is a somewhat sneaky need. Because you got Jimmy Smith and you got Tavon Young. Both of them are coming back, but both of them have been pretty much banged up their entire careers. Uh, they've been facing a lot of health injuries or health issues over the years. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, yeah, he's going to be here. Uh, but MP, he is one that after this year, he could possibly be on the outs. Um, so that's something to think about. Eamon Marshall, you still don't know what you have in him yet. Um, so cornerback is, is sort of like a sneaky, sneaky need. Um, so we, with one of the first two draft picks though, now nah, pass rusher is bigger and the interior of the offensive line, that's big as well. So 
I don't see, I mean, sometimes they do BPA though, best play available, but I just, I don't see it happening. Next question came from my boy Chris D. He said, Angry Raven, hope all is well with you and the fam. I was sitting here wondering, so do you think it's possible for the Ravens and the Vikings to swap picks, the Ravens 27 and 31 for the Vikings 14 and maybe a second or third round pick? And if that's the trade that's accepted, could you see the Ravens drafting Devontae Smith or Jalen Waddle? On NFL Live, they say that they think the Ravens will consider taking fields from Ohio State if they move up to replace Lamar. I uh, just want to know your thoughts. As for me, I think that would be crazy. Uh, also, you wouldn't have to pay the man. Thanks for your time. Yeah, we, we covered that in its own specific video just for Bucky Brooks because that was just. But anyway, this part about uh, Devontae Smith or Jalen Waddle. Um, wow, that would uh, that would really be some aggression right there by the Baltimore Ravens. If they were to move up high enough now, you said pick number uh, what 14. Would they drop that low? I don't really see either one of the two drop that low, but it's anything's possible right now since nothing's official yet. Um, but if either one of the two were to drop that low and the Ravens moved up to go get him, I wouldn't be mad at all. I really wouldn't because, again, my thing with draft picks, having a lot of draft picks is cool, but you're not going to be grabbing a lot of impact players. So I would much rather... Uh, grab the impact players and guys that's going to make a difference like right here, right now. So I would love that. Next question came from my boy Bryson T. He said, what's going on in Graven? Huge fan of what you're doing in the YouTube sports world and love how much recognition you're getting. Uh, I don't think we're getting any recognition or anything, but I appreciate it, though. He said, hope you're in the family well. Now on to my question. With reports coming out that teams are offering trades for Julio, do you think it's possible that the Ravens are a part of this? I think it's possible, but again, we won't know till we know. Um, a lot of times when it comes to the, the bigger name uh, wide receivers and the Ravens, then we usually find out after the fact, after the Ravens didn't get that that guy. Um, and like a the Julio, I mean, not Julio, like a DeAndre, like a Juju, uh, like a Thielen, like uh, did they get in on Stefan Diggs? I don't think they did. But anyway, we usually find out how they tried, but they didn't succeed anyway. Uh, he said it makes so much sense for the Ravens grabbing over the hill <laughs> an age veteran receiver that can go up and grab that ball. Uh, Steve Smith Sr. and Quan Bolden, Shannon Sharp. Just seems a little ironic that after the Ravens build their draft pick capital with the Orlando Brown Jr. trade, now that uh, we're hearing about Julio rumors. I also think Julio will be a great, lo a great location. Uh, for Baltimore, I, th I think you mean Baltimore would be a great location for Julio because it will take the load off of him with less targets, but make those targets count, and that would help with avoiding injuries. Also, a lot of his uh, smaller injuries are turf toe injuries, uh, and with Ravens spending a lot of money on the turf in 2019, it should, <laughs> it should persuade Julio even more. Uh, LOL. Let me know what you think. And like Julio in Atlanta and their cheap turf, I'm out. Hey, you, you you make some good points. You must be a salesperson. But yeah, I mean, it, it would be nice. It would be nice. I would love it. I know a lot of us would love it. Uh, and again, overkill for Lamar. Go overkill at the wide receiver position for Lamar. Whether it's Julio or whether it's somebody else, they got up their sleeve. All right, next question came from Swaggy Squirrel. Uh, then I think this was sent before the Orlando Brown Jr. trade. Anyway, he said, Engraving, hope this email finds you doing well. I just thought about this after reading that the Panthers are looking to possibly trade out of the number eight's pick. Uh, and assuming Pitts is there at eight, he said, slim but possible, depending on what Atlanta and Detroit do. Uh, Detroit is looking at multiple players, but is also considering trading down. Carolina could be a potential landing spot for Orlando Brown since they have have a mediocre at best offensive line well i guess that offensive line is going to continue to stay mediocre at best because they ain't got Orlando brown jr anyway uh he said i think uh he and some other additions to the trade of course could land us that pick uh well now they have two first round picks that could land them uh that pick and, and some more but we'll see and he said possibly detroit's too depending on if the rumors of brad holmes being uh looking being looking for a trade um are true and assuming that Pitts is there. Uh, I think he could be a menace here. Not only being an amazing tight end too like Hurst was, but also a lethal weapon anywhere we put him. Adding another receiving threat alongside Hollywood, Sammy, and Mandrews. All of this comes with assumptions, leading me to believe that this, if it were to happen, would take place on draft day. It makes sense to me, but I always like hearing your opinion on things like these. Pitts with the Ravens. Amazing. Will it happen? No. It's not going to happen. Um, he's probably going to end up going to Atlanta uh, and be not necessarily their replacement for Julio Jones, but 
their replacement for Julio Jones. Uh, I would, I wonder if they would end up if if they get rid of Julio Jones or really when they get rid of Julio Jones. I wonder if they would consider making him a full time wide receiver. I wonder if they would consider that. Something to think about. Next question came from my boy Brandon L. He said, what's good, team? Keep it clean. I sent in a few questions. Maybe not the best, but here goes another. I was wondering, with a report coming out that the Rams aren't even looking at the 40 times for uh, combine participants due to the time not matching up to game speed. If this is the case, I was wondering why the players don't run the 40 in pads so you can get a better idea of the time they will run with their equipment on. Maybe someone who runs a 4-3 really runs a 4-3-7 in pads just curious i'll be watching and supporting the show stay up oh I, I love that question that's a really good one mm, that could be for several different reasons uh and it could be one of the biggest things i think because when they're having a combine when they're doing the 40 times the bench presses and all that they're not playing football they're not in a football state of mind they're in a let me try to do as many reps as i can let me try to run as fast as i can let me try to knock this out uh, best as I can um, so I can get drafted higher, so I can improve my draft stock. But when they're out there on the field, it's a whole different environment. It's a whole different mindset. It's just a whole different vibe. It's a whole nother energy. So when you're, it's, it's like, because it's, it's, it's tough to explain. I want to say it's like taking a test versus, I don't know, actually being in the classroom. Because, I mean, some people, they don't test well. But you know that those people, even though they don't test well, you know that they know their stuff. You know that they can still perform. So I think it's, it can sometimes be the same thing when they're running the 40. Maybe they, they run the 40 and they may look a lot faster or a lot slower in the 40. But when you see them actually on the field, it's like, oh, no, that 40 time, it's not really that important. So that was a really, really good question. I loved it. Next question came from Jay. He said, Ain't Grave and hope all is well with you and the fam. Oh, everything is good. He said, I love the channel and I listen to the podcast every week on Spotify. Hey, I appreciate that. Uh, my question is, with the Ravens making it blatant that they will sign Alejandro Villanueva after the draft to manipulate the comp, the comp pick formula, what other free agents might they have already uh, had handshake post-draft agreements with? Also, with names out there like A.B., Josh Gordon, and Golden Tate, is it possible that the Ravens still can go with one of those options, particularly if both Bateman and Marshall are off the board with the Ravens pick? All right, so a double question here. With um, Alejandro Villanueva, uh, it's not a guarantee yet. Uh, we'll see, but it's not a guarantee. Um, but there's a possible guy like that, Justin Houston. He's one. So, again, I, I'm not a big fan of that comp pick formula thing, like waiting to sign a, a, an impact player. But if it works, still got to give Ravens their props because it will have worked. And I'm sure, again, they got backup plans too. Like right now it's Monday. Got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then it's draft day. Um, nobody's uh, – Right now, Ravens, they're they looking really good for, for waiting because nobody's been pressed on signing any of the, the top pass rushers out there uh, over the past couple of days. So things are still looking good on that front. Um, now, he said with names out there like A.B., we'll scratch Josh Gordon off because he's not in the NFL right now, and Golden Tate, ugh, is it possible the Ravens go with one of those options, uh, particularly if, if Bateman and Marshall are gone when the Ravens are picking? Yes, I think it is, but I think it's unlikely. A.B., I think as a chance, I would like it. Again, he got his case dropped too. Um, but will the Ravens still do that? I don't know. I don't know. If they don't do anything else at wide receiver, I definitely wouldn't mind that at all. Um, even if they did do something at wide receiver, I still wouldn't mind it at all. Uh, Josh Gordon, no Golden Tate, uh, no, uh, not to know to him. Next question came from my guy, Click One. He said, Darren Graven, hope you're doing well and hope you're vaccinated to be protected from C19. Here's <laughs> my question. Does it bother you when we switch linemen around or make them play a position that they weren't originally supposed to play? I'm not talking about Orlando Brown Jr. having to move from left tackle because we needed to do that, but I'm talking about making a guard play tackle or something like that. The perfect example is Bradley Bozeman, who was a center in college. But now he plays guard in the NFL. Do you believe that if Bozeman strictly played center, we wouldn't be talking about the Ravens having snapping issues? It just angers me that we are trying to develop and taking guys out of places that they have already strived in. I love this question because it is such a great question and it is something that the Ravens have done. I don't even think it's just on the offensive line, but just in general. 
um, where the Ravens, they take a guy that did this certain thing in college and then even sometimes in the NFL, and then they take him and change him to do something else that he didn't do, is not comfortable doing, and then they wonder why, hey, why didn't this work? Why are we struggling with this? Hey, what's the problem? What's going on? And some guys off the top of my he did mention Bradley Bozeman. Yeah, he was a center in college, and Ravens said, no, you're going to be a guard. It's like, oh, okay. Um, what was this, Keenan Reynolds? Quarterback in college. Oh, you know what? You're going to play receiver. Kamele mm. Correa, pass rusher in college. Oh, you know what? You're going to be an inside linebacker. Okay. Matt Elam was more of a strong safety in the box safety in college. Oh, you're going to be a free safety. You're going to roam the field. Tony Jefferson, he was always in the box. Oh, no, Tony Jefferson, we're going to sign you to all this money. We're going to have you drop back a lot. And not to say that you can't expand somebody's role or have them grow, but you, you, you want to use people to their strengths. You want to use them to their strengths and let them do what they do because you want to certainly, if you're going to draft somebody, if you're going to sign somebody, you want to do what you can to get the most out of them, to maximize their potential, maximize their value for your team. So, yes, it, it is a bit frustrating when that happens. Because it, it, it happens a lot. And I'm sure it happens with every team. Maybe. But um, I just, you got to play guys to their strengths. Next question came from Duke. He said, what's up, Engraven? I've been doing some thinking and came to the conclusion that Steve Bashotti can live or die as long as the Ravens sell tickets. As you know, the cap is cap. Mm. Uh, and I don't want to immediately go there. But what if Steve is content with building the cheapest roster possible through the draft so that he can make back that much more revenue, letting Lamar Jackson carry us in close games instead of going all in like the Kansas City Chiefs have done with Mahomes? Whew. I um, mm, I hope that's not the case. And I certainly think these Ravens would like to build a winner. Um, but I, I think, because obviously, I mean, we can all go back to, oh, they, they won two Super Bowls in, what, 26 years? So that, or 25, 26 years. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, but now is, I think since the Ravens have had a significant amount of success, uh, in their short period of time being in the NFL, um, I, I think sometimes that can almost make them feel like, okay, well, we've had success, so we don't really need to change too much of what we're doing because it's worked. It's worked. Eric DeCosta talked about that in the, um, the pre-draft presser with, uh, when they asked him about the wide receiver position. They asked him about the struggles at wide, the wide receiver position, and he said, well, I look at us and how we win in games and whatnot, and it was like, oh, okay, well, good answer, Eric, because the Ravens have been winning games, but – it seems to, it's, it's been limited when it comes to, obviously, the postseason. Regular season, oh, yeah, ain't nobody worried about that, but postseason, because that's when you really got to come together and get that thing done. Um, so I just, I, I don't want to say, I can't say that they're content with just winning in the regular season and playoffs, they're like, whatever, um, because even last year showed that. Like, they went for, two years ago, they went 14-2, and two, got, went to the playoffs and got whooped. And they were like, oh, man, okay, well, Derrick Henry, we, we got something for him. So they built their team just for the Titans. <laughs> but that's, that's the only team that's the only, that's the only team that they built their team for, and that's the only team that they beat in the playoffs because they went and got beat up, uh, beat up on by Buffalo. Um, so hopefully now they can really uh, just build their team to be even more competitive. So, yeah, I can't say that they're content, um, but I just, I just think that, it's taking the Ravens a little bit more time, and it's still taking them some time to actually get with the times. So next question, the final question on this episode, a question from subscribers came from my boy Antonio. He said, hey, Graven, I've uh, been watching for a while now since about 2017. I appreciate that. Uh, keep up the good work, man. Bigger and better things are ahead. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, he said to question, uh, I did a mock draft for the Ravens using the PFF mock draft simulator. Uh, my results and explanations are on the uh, picture below. I was wondering what your thoughts are about it. Would this be a good draft to set up the Ravens for success this year? And in the long term, can this draft be a turning point for Eric DaCosta as GM? As always, man, keep it clean and go Ravens. So uh, his first round draft pick was Tevin Jenkins, a tackle from Oklahoma State. He said he's 6'6", 320 pounds, good size, a marler in the run game, perfect replacement for Orlando Brown Jr. 
Uh, and then he said we traded number 31 pick to the Jacksonville Jaguars. We received number 33 pick, 106, and a fourth rounder. Oh, and a fourth round in 2022. He said he should have asked for a third instead of a fourth in 2022. Hey, he should have. You got to ask high. Uh, but in this way, he said um, number 33, we draft Jason Owen, edge guy from Penn State, explosive, high motor at 6'5", 252 pounds, ran a 4'3". Ooh, that, that is insane. Uh, production wasn't there in terms of sacks. Oh, well, welcome to the Ravens. Uh, but the ability with the right supporting cast to be successful. Longer term project. Ooh, that's a little scary when you use that word. And when you couple that with each other, uh, production wasn't there in terms of sex and long term, longer term project. That would worry me right there, uh, especially if you're picking somebody that high. I'm not I really wouldn't be for the project type of players, especially right here, right now where the Ravens are looking to compete right here. Right. And yeah, I don't know about that. Anyway. Number 94, uh, pick 94, Nico Collins, wide receiver from Michigan. I've been hearing a lot of people talk about Nico Collins. Uh, he said a 6'4", bigger receiver, has a ridiculous size to speed ratio, needs help with breaks and routes, stiff at times. Ooh, overall is a solid player, could develop into what Miles Boykin could be. So if, oh, if he could develop into what Miles Boykin could be, then might as well just hope that these new coaches develop Miles Boykin into what he can be. Uh, next up, he said uh, number 104, pick 104, Trey Hill, inside offensive lineman from Georgia. Versatile, solid lineman, 6'4", 330. Plays in a majority of the time, but has the ability to play guard. Bradley Bozeman type of potential. If he's going to be the center, let him be the center. Let him be the center. We need a true center, somebody who played in all different types of weather games. Shout out to my guy Marcus Holmes, which is a great suggestion. But um, we don't need the flip-flopping around. We need a true center somebody who's ready to man that position um number 106 uh jonathan cooper edge guy from ohio state good hands and pass rush set switches from power to quickness well okay uh loses edge uh well, yeah loses edge in the run game at times uh 6'4 257 runs a 4'6 okay see that ain't bad I, I, I like that one and if he loses the edge in the run game so at times okay coach him up coach him up on that one but that one sounds good excuse me uh, pick 131, uh, Tyree Gillespie, a safety from Missouri, underrated prospect, good cover safety, has great run, oh, great pursuit angles, and tackles well. Diamond in the rough. I love it. You ain't even got nothing to say about it. Uh, 136, Aaron Banks, a guard from Notre Dame, 6'6", 330, great pass protection, uh, lower level athletic ability, good depth player. Okay, that's a good one too. Uh, pick number 171, Trey Brown, a cornerback from Oklahoma. Nickel corner, smaller guy. Okay, I like, I like. It. Uses leverage well, but doesn't display good strength at time. Could be a long term replacement for Tay Tay in the slot. All right, yeah, because it, it, we need to have insurance for Tay Tay. He didn't put Tay Tay. He put Tavon Young. I'm just saying Tay Tay. But anyway, y'all know who I was talking about. Pick 184, uh, Stone Forsyth, a tackle from Florida. Good depth player. Play both tackle positions. Boom. Okay, some more depth there. Uh, and the last pick, Kyle Granson, tight end from SMU. Um, undersized, he's 6'3", okay, so he's a smaller tight end, but good catching ability. Above average athlete for a tight end, willing blocker, especially good when used in pre-snap motions. Okay, and that will give us another tight end to compete with Josh Oliver, with uh, Jacob Breeland, with uh, Noah Wolf, or is it Eli Wolf? I think it's Eli Wolf. Um, and Eric Tomlinson, too. And then, of course, we still got Mandrews and Nick Boyle. And hopefully Nick Boyle will be coming back healthy, but... Yeah, this was a pretty good draft. The only one I just really I, I couldn't get with uh, was that, well, yeah, pick pick thirty. No, excuse me. Yeah, pick number thirty-three, uh, Jason Owen. With how you described him, when you said the production wasn't there, uh, and he'd be a longer-term project, I don't think Ravens got no time for projects, especially picking somebody in the second round. <laughs>